company are you working for? I'm working for PIMCO. Uh, we are an um, international mm. asset manager. And uh, what's your nationality? I'm Belgian. Where do you work now? Currently, I'm in London. I used yeah. to stay for four years in Bel uh, in Singapore, but yeah. Singapore, and for how long in Singapore? I was I moved away like eight years ago to Singapore, stayed there for four years, and then I moved to London. London, and how long have you been in London now? For four years now. Four years. What hobbies did you have before you went? Drinking. Drinking. Partying. <laughs> And were you able to do the same hobbies over there? Uh, obviously not, because it's far more expensive to drink in Singapore. Really? In London, yeah, you can drink, but it's not the sa same social aspect because it's completely different. The same as in Singapore or in... It's just different. Like back in Belgium, I used to drink with my friends and cousins. Yeah. And then in Singapore, I stopped drinking so much because it's, it's more expensive. I start picking up doing sports uh, mm -hmm. and the social aspect you know, over in continental Europe is more going out for drinks to socialize with your colleagues. Yeah. If you look in Singapore, it's more going out for food with your colleagues, with mm. the people. So drinking is replaced by food. So now about working, why did you decide to move to Singapore eight years ago and now London? Uh, just a change. You do change. You want if you want to change to see the world. The right time is when you're young, when you're not bound really. So you just decide to move because you have no strengths. It's easier to mm -hmm. move for yourself. Yeah. So I decided to move over there to learn new things, to see the world, and make new friends. And yeah. then four years ago, I decided to move back. Was it different? Was it a big difference for you to adapt from eight years in Singapore to the Western life back in? As I only lived like what I would say like. It is always like a, you need to adapt wherever you go. Yeah. You choose another country, especially if it's not your mother tongue, it's going to be... Mm -hmm. uh, so the easiest thing that help you adapting is uh, going out. Mm -hmm. um, it will assist you. Work is obviously is going to help you at the beginning because yeah, if true. you enjoy your, your colleagues, it's going to help you quite a bit. After that, you have to start trying to do your best, socialize. And your job content, what you had to do for you, the same job that you did? Um, it's in the same area, when in the same, always the same operations area of corporate. Like, you need the same background, but yeah. the way you do things and see things is different from <clears throat> like inside of the back, I um, mean the front. Mm -hmm. So it's like uh, if you take like uh, construction work, you have like different aspects. At the yeah. end of the day, what you want is just the house, but you have like someone who's doing like welding, someone is putting mm -hmm. the stones on, yeah. on the ground and everything. So you have all these different aspects I have been rotating in this area. Ah, okay. And at your work job, were there other facilities in Singapore? Maybe you guys go lunch together and things like that? or And in London, do you do the same thing? Or? So in Singapore, it was pretty obvious, uh, pretty normal that you, during lunchtime you go out with your during colleagues place, yeah. and spend like one and a half hour, like 90 minutes for lunch, even though an official break time is one hour. Minutes. Yeah, it's pretty normal over there. So yeah. I once literally going for 90 minutes out or two hours. Doesn't really matter um, because you know you're gonna stay later. Mm -hmm. You don't really bother about exactly yeah. 50 minutes, 60 minutes. So you just take your lunch break. You go out with your colleagues mm -hmm. for uh, in the food court and go back to work. Now about adapting. Yeah, your experience about the culture. Did there were there some things in Singapore that shocked you? For example, you have in China that they eat uh, and things like that. I don't yeah. know if in Singapore you have things. I think, obviously, because I grew up like as in Vietnamese, mm -hmm. so I have been raised in two different cultures. So for me, there was always the Asian route. So moving to Singapore, oh. it wasn't a big deal. Yeah. So at the end, it's like change of friends. I have to make new friends, yeah. looking for getting used to the lifestyle over there because mm -hmm. the weather obviously is completely different. Um, but it was fine for me. I do know like a lot of people, like more white people. It's a big change for them because previously they saw a lot of white people and then suddenly they see more like uh, yellow people, Asian people. Yeah. But then again, Singapore is very expat oriented. So you have a really? big community of foreigners. Mm. And so it's pretty easy actually for a foreigner to move to Singapore or Hong oh, Kong yeah. compared to for a foreigner to move to, for example, to India or to mm -hmm. Malaysia. The interview would you do it again? And if you have any advice for me, what would it be? Working abroad and... I think, yeah, for me, obviously, I have no issues to, to redo the interview because mm -hmm. I think, like, as a student, you always need, like, help. I received back in the days help from other people, too. So I think, like, it's a give and take. Mm -hmm. And if you just think about yourself and not helping each other, 
it will also reflect on your work life so at the end it's a work ethic you get help you have out people too if you're just gonna think on your own yeah. more hurdles in a later stage of your work life balance That's too true. um and are you planning to go abroad again like after working in london and stuff actually right now we don't know yet uh mm -hmm. we are still thinking to start these two additional years in london after that we will see we might move back to belgium we might move somewhere else depends so you have to be mobile and you move a bit really decide like, yeah i'm gonna stay in my hometown where there's no work because mm -hmm. then you 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 literally decide like okay there's no work i'm gonna stay home back here C convenient for me but yeah if you're jobless you can't afford anything so it's yeah, a bit stupid true. and silly i think but you have a lot of people thinking that way too so it's instead of moving to towards the work they think the work should move to them right? um about uh networking. networking yeah i think due to the fact that actually that we are living in the globalization actually networking is really interest uh, important so it's good to have meet people from other countries cultures because yeah. you will understand them more and you might always deal with people from those cultures on a later stage so having a very good strong networking system is it's very important yeah. that's why all those social media websites are, are doing pretty well because it's yeah. all about networking yeah. like, okay facebook is more like for your private life but then on on the work site you have like linkedin yeah linkedin glass door glass door and all that stuff again mm -hmm. like social media can be a good benefit but it can be it's a double edge yeah. sword because it can be good but also bad most important is um, networking yeah. Yeah. you know they will always choose people they know or they don't know yeah. they know you're good but the other guy has like a much better cv they will probably go for the safe at least they know you yeah instead of you know but they don't know but their cv is like that's yeah, why it's you important. might have like the best skills like 90 and someone else who has like 65 70 yeah. skills but they know you obviously the choice is done yeah. because they're gonna take the one that they know has this happened to you guys before or? obviously yes uh you need that's why you need networking because it is just the word it's your gateway to get into yeah it, it does it's and... it's not a 100 percent, but yeah. it gives you the first step into yeah. the door so it does make a big difference actually especially like in the in a very competitive world thing a bit about, about networking you know the cv and yeah. interviews in london you there's a lot of headhunters you know just directly calling you yeah. and emailing yeah. you and say i heard you know you were looking from this person this person yeah. i have your contact so it's totally yeah. different yeah very it's aggressive more. buddy and they yeah. heard that you were looking and then they go and but that's all about competition um i think that culture is moving over because it it was like obviously like a very Commonwealth culture, you have it more and more like now with the continent of Europe too. The continent of Europe is always a bit slower on all those things. So it is still coming o over and you get headhunted too. Yeah. But the extent is much so okay. That's why uh, if you, are, you you get a head start, it's always good. That's Every true. little inch will help you in your career. Uh, uh, you might think like a skills that you would never think associate with your work. It might help you to get a job mm -hmm. like for me in singapore was like socializing with people like through dragon boating it's sports but because it's actually very popular over there you meet a lot of people yeah. in the finance industry in different er areas and at the end of the day it happens that you might know common people too yeah. it does help all those things it, it is really weird the world is so connected nowadays mm -hmm. you never really know so you just also have to pay attention with your social media not to, social, post, yeah. not to put everything and, out there. and also important is when you change jobs you burn bridges you never know when yeah. you meet them again yeah. in your you know if you burn bridges and a rumor goes out that that's also has this happened right? before with you that you're like no. ex-colleague or <laughs> not really yeah i well, haven't you know that's why it's important to keep yeah. you know even though you really really so about your time in Vietnam and I still have contact with them knowing the culture but mostly it was interesting going to work there for three years yeah. it's, it's very it's interesting, interesting yeah. yeah and it's all different ages also Japanese guy who was oh, yeah. there because yeah younger people who wanted to study in the university to stay in contact now than before and when we travel abroad 
we have people we know in those countries and then we can meet up and I think also like if you do if you move abroad and everything you have to choose your friends Mm -hmm. so it's not like being picky or whatever like that it's just like literally you can't maintain a, a, a close group of 100 people so you have to cut it down yeah. and choose like who are the most important that you think you can go through thick yeah. and but I think it's like the same in daily life you yes. know yeah. you, 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 have to choose. You, can, you, can. you don't get along with everybody and sometimes you so yeah. then it's mm-hmm. better to keep them yeah. yeah. respectful everything. and politeness is very important yeah. it is in every country it's slightly different it's over overpolite but over after polite. yeah so what do you mean by over polite like if people bump into you see it's not your fault it's the other person's fault but because you're just so used you're just gonna say sorry oh. i'm sorry over politeness giving up your chair it's pretty normal but then again if you go to southeast asia sing up to an elderly person or a pregnant woman yeah. so you see it's different cultures but then again like you can always be polite it's better to be more polite mm-hmm. than less if you're less you're rude and you never know if that person might be your next boss since to people before mm-hmm. the upcoming boss in future yeah, especially in london because everybody's taking the tube cars yeah. or anything because, no, so. mm-hmm. it might be like you don't really know so even some people like just wear like really casual mm-hmm. actually they're moving you know everything yeah. so that's why you never know and it doesn't hurt you to be polite. Sorry, polite, giving up your chair, but it would be nice that you receive it from other people. Okay.